Can a license plate alert parents of improper teen driving behavior? Welcome back to another Textination interview. I'm Fred Fishkin, and with us is Neville Boston, founder and chief strategy officer at Reviver Auto. Thank you for joining us, Neville. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Give us some background to start out with and, and what, do, what the company's about. The, the company is about innovation, it's about technology, and it's about doing something I think that's non-sexy. It's, uh, we do compliance. Uh, we looked at you know, what was going on at the DMV, we saw how it was broken, and we thought you know, we use apps and things like that for everything that we do in our everyday lives. How come we're not updating our registration on our vehicles in the same way? So the, the thought process behind it was simplifying kind of a broken system and bringing it into the 21st century. You mean you're going to keep me from getting in line at my beloved motor vehicle department? Absolutely. <laughs> I want you to save some time, do some other things that you that you believe are important. But my the big thing around the technology is, is that when you think about the license plate, in over 110 years, it hadn't changed. It was the same thing. And the ways in which we were, we were transacting business um, was the only part, I, one of the only parts of society that was so paper heavy. Like, why are we utilizing the same broken systems that we've been us, utilizing for decades? So it's like, why not bring it into the 21st century? Why not automate it? Why not utilize it like you, you know, use your online banking? You have an app, you can basically update your information based on that application. And we have two-party authentication when it comes to banking, you know, remotely. So why wouldn't we be able to do that when it comes to, you know, uh, driving and updating our registration? So the license plate would be running off of the, the car battery, I would guess? Well, there's a couple of different ways. There's actually a battery operated plate um, that runs on a battery. The use case will have the battery lasting about five years, uh, 10 years if it was on the shelf. So it has a long battery life. There are literally three screws on the back that you would replace it and actually show you what it looks like on the back three screws you replace those screws and you replace the battery and then we have a wired version that is wired into the vehicle that takes a professional installation uh, it does have a battery as a backup but it uh, uses constant power from the vehicle um, for its operations the good thing about the technology that we're using we're using bi-stable technology is that this image will stay like this for 50 years, 100 years. It only, needs, it, only, it only needs power to change the image. So it operates just like a metal license plate. And that's the reason why we decided to go with this technology over you know, LCD or anything like that. And there's a communications aspect to this. Tell me about that. Yeah, so with the battery operated plate, it's Bluetooth enabled. So you can use uh, Bluetooth to update it. Um, you know, in proximity or remotely. It also has LTE, both AT&T and Verizon uh, networks that you've got access to. Uh, so it allows you to be able to be connected and update you know, remotely. So if you've got a large fleet of vehicles um, or wanna know where your kids are at, you, you, can, you can utilize the technology for that. Really interesting. So is there GPS built into it as well? There's GPS built into the uh, wired plate. Um, the battery operated plate uh, doesn't have GPS, but it has accelerometers. So it senses motion in the X, Y, and Z axis uh, when it comes to you know, movement. And uh, later this year, we'll have a unit that would allow it to have uh, you know, GPS capabilities. So tell me where this is being used today. And uh, you've, you've had some growth. Yeah, so, so currently um, we're selling the product in California and Arizona. Uh, we have full authorization in Illinois and Michigan and in Georgia. Um, we have authorization to put it on vehicles in Texas for fleets. Uh, and we're working on legislation to give us full access. And then we have legislation uh, moving in Florida to give us access there as well. And then in Maryland and Pennsylvania, we have a pilot that's going on with you know, uh, the Department of Transportation. What are some of the hurdles that you have to overcome in, in convincing state governments and lawmakers that this is a good idea besides inertia, or is that the big thing? Well, you know something, it's, it's really interesting. COVID has been a big boost because when DMVs closed down and you couldn't, they closed down their offices, 
And, and basically you couldn't go in and transact business. We were still able to do business because we have API connections that allow us to be able to transact. So when things were closed, we were still open. And I think there was a realization from folks that, hey, we don't know what's gonna happen in the future. There could be another pandemic. How do we operate effectively so that our customers are taken care of? So having technology like this enabled a lot of folks to look at it differently. Uh, also, flip side, uh, when people started talking about, you know, uh, you know, automated driving, you know, so, you know, driverless, you know, vehicles, uh, then, you know, having a digital license plate didn't seem like a too far field. <laughs> if you can drive a car with nobody in it, then you could probably have a digital license plate. So uh, how could this, tie, how could this technology tie in with the, with the AVs? Well, one way it could tie in is that standardize, you know, the communication protocols. Like, how is the information? How how do you know that it's in autonomous mode? We can we could set it up to where you know there is something that indicates it here on the plate that lets you know that if you look on the right hand side, you know there is a there is some kind of lettering or something that lets you know that it's in an autonomous mode. Uh, you can use it as a way of standardizing messaging. These plates, because they're digital, are a way for you to standardize how your license plates look. So law enforcement can easily see, hey, this is a, this is a legal plate because this is the format that we utilize you know, within you know, this, this, this arena. So I think what it is, what we've done is that we have been okay with pressing metal and creating images that are different across the board. Every state has a different license plate. This is a way to standardize it to make it easier for law enforcement, for the Department of Motor Vehicles, and you know, for people to actually visualize and see what it is. So, but there would be different colors for different states as there as there are today. Different well, patterns. I mean, well, yeah. So there are different patterns. There are different kinds of fonts that states use. Um, what what we would look to do right now, we just use it's it's black, white, and grayscale for these plates. They're not in color yet. Uh, the color aspect will come, I believe, later, and that's basically tied to uh, its ability um, to have the wide range, the temperature range that we're looking for. Because there are color plates out there, but they only go from, I think, zero to about 130 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, these plates will go from negative 40 to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. So it can be used in almost any, you know, any scenario. So our, our, our reasons for not having colored plates out yet is tied to its you know, temperature variance. How expensive are these? So um, you can buy a plate outright. Uh, so this plate here would cost $4.99 uh, plus uh, I think $4.99 a month. And then the wired plate is $5.99. Or you could get it like you get a cell phone and this would be $17.95 and then the wired uh, version is twenty four ninety five. Interesting. Honestly, so, yeah. so, tell me what the where this is going to go next. As, so as you're as you're going you're going state to state, right? With this, right, right. So we we uh, identified the top ten vehicle markets in the U.S. and that's what we've targeted. And by the end of this year, we should be in right around fifty percent of the vehicle driving population uh, based on the states that we've targeted. Uh, and what we're looking to do is be able to set up a network where you can do registration in every state, you know, digitally and, you know, in a more simple uh, manner. So that's, that's the big thing that we're doing is, is connecting all the DMVs together so that you're able to do registration from one state to the other. Um, Cause that's- Could you also deal. incorporate things like easy pass into the license? Absolutely. Plan? Yeah, so we'll be, um, we're working on that right now, not just easy pass, but also for parking, uh, you know, be able to have the plate operate as a parking meter as well. So that, you know, it's it basically touchless, like you don't have to go out and interact, you can do everything over your app. And it knows where it is. Really interesting. How do you deal with the possibility of fender benders? do happen from time to time. <laughs> well, you know something, that's the interesting thing about this technology. Let me see if I can pull something here for you so that you can see it. Um, this plate, as you can see, has been cracked. The screen has been cracked. 
and across the board, but you can read the lettering on it. And it's because of how the technology works that it's set. Uh, the die is set and it takes power for it to move. So this entire screen can be destroyed and you can still read the letters. And that's the difference. So if somebody's in an accident and a fender bender, you'll still have that license plate that's available, but we'll get one out to you within you know, 24 to 48 hours to be able to switch it out. So is the print on there actually a digital display? It is. It's a digital display. It's called e-ink uh, technology. It's a bystable right. display. So it's ink setting, you know, based on uh, the, um, the power and, and, and it sets in that place and it just stays. And that's the beauty of it. It operates just like a metal plate, but it's digital. How did this come about? Well, you know, uh, 2008, <laughs> you know, I had a, a different kind of company, I had a marketing company in Manhattan, and um, I was on my way to building, you know, this huge business, you know, so I had clients like Microsoft and Pepsi, and we were on our way, and 2008 happened, and everything changed, and I realized at that point that I needed to be in a business of a, of a product that, you know, every year had to be renewed. I needed to be somewhat recession-proof. Because uh, 2008, going into 2009, if it taught you anything, it taught you that you know nothing is, and you've got to look at things differently, and you have to have a plan A, B, and C. So um, I was talking to a good friend of mine uh, who'd worked in state government in California. We were having dinner uh, back in 08, and he had just gone to the DMV and had a horrible experience. And we were talking about state-owned assets that were being underutilized. And we kept coming back to the same thing. Every year you have to renew your registration, but the license plate hadn't changed in over hundred years. So if we could allow people not to have to go to the DMV and be able to update their plates remotely, and me from my marketing background saying that when the vehicles are parked, that we could do some kind of targeted messaging, then we would actually have a product that was compelling. And um, we took our, crazy idea. Uh, he was able to find somebody at the California DMV that, you know, would take a meeting with us. Uh, this guy named Dennis Clear, and he was over uh, legislative activities for the DMV. We spoke to him. What was supposed to be a five-minute meeting ended up being an hour and a half because they were going to go more online. And then he got us in touch with his counterpart on the Cal uh, California Highway Patrol uh, law enforcement, and we had the conversation with them. And what we came up away from that meeting with is that if you talk to people and you get them involved and you listen to their ideas, then they're willing to help you. <laughs> so it's a, it's a crazy thing. Everybody thinks government this is the scary thing and it's not, it's like they're people. And if you talk to them about what you're thinking about, they're actually interested. So that's, that's where this came from. It's a crazy idea in 2008 that you know, became a business in 2009. For more info, where do people go? Go to www.reviver.com. And Reviver is R-E-V-I-V-E-R.com. It's spelled the same way forward as it is backwards. Neville Boston, thank you for taking the time with us. Thank you for having me. <laughs>